He announced that Allah and his messenger, they know God. So, Ka'b al Malik said, when I, once I found no more hope, I climbed back the fence and I left. One night, he received, he, he found a messenger from the Prophet ﷺ. Came to him and he said, Prophet ﷺ said to you, don't touch your wife. Or stay away from your wife. Stay away from her. So he was ready to sacrifice anything. He said, should I divorce her? He is ready to please the Prophet with anything. But maybe your wife said, shave your beard, you shave your beard, you, 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 you uh, make Allah angry with you, the Messenger وسلم, angry with you to please your wife. Mountain of Salah. It's a small mountain. 
Jabal Uhud, mountain of Uhud, behind, on the against direction of Qibla of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, or the room of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, which he buried in. And the Salah, so if this is the masjid, and here is the Qibla, for example, Uhud will be on my back and Salah will be to my right side. So he, here the voice came in, coming from the direction of Mount and Salah, but he sees no one. Saying, O oh, Ka'b ibn Malik, O oh, Ka'b ibn Malik, receive the glad tidings. So Ka'b ibn Malik didn't even say, what is it? He prostrated himself to Almighty Allah. He knew that something good and Allah decided something. Why he prostrated to Allah? What if he said, O oh, Ka'b ibn Malik, without saying, without saying, there is a glad tidings for you. He would prostrate himself as well. As a matter of respect to the decision of Almighty Allah. And it gives us a sunnah. If you hear any good news at any time, even in the street, for example, you expect the result of your son in any, uh, if he will be graduated or not, so someone called you, he said, your son said passed, so you may make such a immediately. People will laugh at you, laugh at you. Who cares? Right? Who cares? Should I have wudu? No, you don't need wudu for that. Because it's not a salah. It's a special way to thank Allah. That's it. So he prostrated himself immediately, and then when the guy came after a little while, because the guy was in rush to tell him there is a good news, and he screamed from far away because that gives you what? Indication that companions, they were action to speak back to their friends or to their brothers. Sometimes if we decide to cut some brother for some reason, Everybody look at him as a real enemy. No, he's not an enemy. He's our brother. He's our beloved brother, but we want to teach him something. He's not our enemy. So don't consider him an enemy of you. So once he said to him, Almighty Allah, send, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he uh, set you free. He said, I had a dress on myself, that's the only thing I own on that time. So I took off my dress, I gifted the guy the dress, who gave me the good news. And now he wants to go to the Prophet. He has only maybe his desire, he can't go to the Prophet, to the Prophet like that. So he went to any neighbor and he borrowed a suit. He said, first I have to sell them. Suit, two part, two pieces. He put them on and he rushed to the Prophet While he was going to the Prophet people stopped him on the way, whatever. People of Ansar, they stopped him and they congratulated him, this and that. They were happy for him. He so happy till he entered the masjid of the Prophet Prophet was surrounded with muhajirin. Muhajirin gave a smile, uh, greeted him, but none of them stood up <coughs> to shake his hand or to hug him. But Talha ibn Ubaidillah, Talha ibn Ubaidillah, one of the ten, one of the ten, ten companions who are the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, give them the good news, they are end of my lives. So he said, Talha came, stood up, hugged me and shook my hand and he said he congratulated me and greeted me and I will never forget that to Allah because in the good time you need to see, to see support or in the tight time you want